So I guess we should um, start. So um, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. And um, thank you for participating in this event. Uh, my name is Yujin Han from Yonsei University. Um, so I'm very happy and um, be, um, very honored to introduce Professor um, Junsen Zhang, who is an invited speaker for this session. So if you study labor um, or family economics, it's hard not to know Professor Zhang. Um, he is a fellow of Econometric Society and has published more than 100 papers, including leading economic journals such as General Political Economy, Review of Economic Studies, and AJ Economic Policy. So um, his work is cited more than 10,000 times and has been um, particularly influential in topics such as economics of family, uh, fertility, um, marriage education, aging, um, just to name a few. He, is, uh, he has also served many editorial roles in journals such as Journal of Human Resources and General Population Economics. So today, Professor Zhang uh, will talk about his exciting research about tiger parenting, the topic of which we are all um, keen to know much more about. Um, so regarding logistics, we will have about 30-minute um, presentation with uh, five minutes um, Q&A at the end. So if you have any questions, feel free to utilize the chat box or um, you can ask at the end of the, uh, at, at the Q&A session. Okay, um, so without further ado, um, Professor Zhang, now the floor is all yours. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for your nice introduction. And uh, I'm very honored to have this uh, opportunity to report uh, this paper. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Oh, okay. So you said I have 40 minutes or 30 minutes? Uh, about 35 minutes, 35, uh, yeah, about 40 minutes, yes. Mm -hmm. Total 40 minutes or total 45 minutes? Yeah, total 45 minutes, including questions. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So I can talk for 40 minutes and five minutes Q&A. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So this paper is about uh, a simple uh, economic analysis of tiger parenting. Uh, evidence from child developmental delay or learning disability. Uh, it is uh, co-authored with a Andy Chong, my former PhD student, uh, who has currently moved to UK. Okay, so this uh, book, uh, many of you may know, uh, Battle Him of the Tiger Mother. Okay, and uh, I cite a few quotes uh, of the mother uh, said to the daughter, if the next time is not perfect, I'm going to take all your stuffed animals and burn them. Okay, another quote, assume it's because the child didn't work hard enough. That's why the solution to the substandard performance is always to excolorate, punish, and shame the child. So it's a very tough, uh, style of uh, parenting. Okay, so this is uh, the law professor, uh, Amy Cho uh, at Yale, okay? And the way she uh, parented her two daughters, whether it's about piano or whether it's uh, about uh, school performance, uh, everything is very strict. And this, uh, at that time of the book, uh, 2011, okay, about uh, 10 years ago, or, yeah, uh, it caused uh, a huge uh, controversy in the media and also in the academia. Uh, in the economic literature, we uh, have a brief summary of uh, two waves of uh, studies on uh, related or on the economics of parenting. Uh, the first wave started with a, a study by Weinberger, uh, 2001, a JPE paper. So who regards corporal punishment as an instrument to influence the behavior of children. And in particular, uh, he argued 
corporal punishment is common in low income groups because parents' ability to mold their children's behavior through pecuniary incentive is limited at the low income. Okay. For high income parents, they have other ways. Uh, they can give toys, they can give uh, uh, allowances and so on. Okay, then there are a few other studies uh, afterwards. The more recent uh, study, a uh, second wave we call it, uh, on tiger parenting uh, is a recent work by Dupuki and Zilapoti. Okay, uh, one of them is in Econometrica. Uh, so they, uh, their study uh, uh, is theoretical. Okay, so they have a theoretical model that predicts the choices among three alternative parenting styles, authoritarian, okay, so uh, it's like dictator. And the second type is authoritative, so it's authority, but it's it's not as uh, authoritarian, uh, as tough as authoritarian, okay, authoritative. Okay. And then uh, the more free going style permissive. Okay. And one of the prediction of their model is uh, they think uh, more educated parents are more likely to switch from authoritarian style. Okay, which means direct imposition of parents will on children to an authoritarian style. Okay, in other words, uh, education, higher education will move away from uh, dictatorship style of uh, education to the second type or even the third type. Okay, so the, 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 their study is uh, theoretical. So we, uh, our study is mainly empirical. Uh, first, we uh, develop a very simple economic analysis using a very simple model to illustrate how uh, parents uh, educate their children in a human capital investment framework. Okay. In particular, we look at whether parents would punish their children uh, from the angle of human capital in terms of children's ability. So the simple intuition is, is like this. If the child's performance is not good, if the child uh, is very capable, but the performance is not good, then the parents should punish, okay? On the other hand, if the child's ability is not high, in that case, the parents may not choose to punish, okay? So whether to punish or not depends on child's capability. And that is our main uh, new idea of this paper, which has not been uh, studied before. So as I said, this study attempts to consider the productivity of the children's effort in their human capital investment. So productivity of children's effort means uh, how effective or how capable uh, the children is in, uh, in study. So the question is if they put in enough effort, whether it will generate uh, good performance. Okay, so that depends on the productivity or capability of the children. And we also test uh, Dupuki and Zilaboti's uh, predictions that education will reduce the likelihood of punishment. Okay. And we test uh, our hypothesis as well as uh, Dupuki and Zilaboti's uh, hypothesis uh, using uh, micro data from the US. Okay, so I think that is the basic idea. Now, the capability measurement we use is 
whether the child has environmental delay or learning disability. So what we call DDLD, okay? So the left hand side is whether to punish the child if the child's performance is bad. Okay, the right hand side variable is uh, whether the child has a problem in environmental aspects or learning aspects. Okay. So what is a uh, environmental delay? According to uh, Michigan Medicine, okay, environmental delay is when the child does not reach their development development milestones at the expected times. Okay, it is an ongoing major or minor delay in the process of development. If the child is temporarily lagging behind, that's not called developmental delay. Okay, and so the delay can uh, happen in many things, growth or fine motor, language, social thinking, okay. And uh, DD is most often a diagnosis made by a doctor based on strict guidelines, okay? And the, the cause of developmental delay could be genetic or could be other complication from pregnancy or birth, okay? And what is learning disability? According to Learning Disability Association of America, LD are due to genetic and or neurobiological factors that alter brain functioning in a manner which affects one or more cognitive processes related to learning. This processing problems can interfere with learning basic skills such as reading, writing, and math, okay? So, and many other things. So that's the basic concept of uh, DDLD. Now, to uh, guide the empirical study, we have a very simple uh, illustrating model where we show uh, how uh, punishment probability affect uh, study effort and how uh, child's ability or capability affects the probability of punishment. Okay, so there are two things. How child's ability affect punishment probability. And second, how punishment probability affects child effort. We mainly want to uh, illustrate these two things. So consider a simple model between a parent and a child, uh, each maximizing uh, utility. Okay, so it's a, a sequential game. Parent choose the probability of punishment, then the child choose amount of effort. Okay, so parents choose the probability of punishment. Okay, so that probability of punishment is known to the child, and then the child choose amount of effort. We solve the problem backward. So solve the child's optimization problem first, and then solve the parent's problem. So the child has a very simple utility function. Okay, it's a, a times u. u is a function of x. Okay, and, x, and then the second argument is delta times p. Okay, and p is a function of h. Now, what is X? X is study effort, okay? So the child utility depends on the study effort. Of course, the partial derivative is negative. The more you study, we assume uh, it generates negative utility to the child, assuming study is boring and uh, not enjoyable, okay? And delta times P is, delta is a probability of punishment times P. P is the severity of punishment. Severity of punishment is a function of H. H is a human capital. And H is equal to R times X plus Epsilon. R is the child's ability. X is study effort. So R times X is the level of human capital that generate. 
plus a random error epsilon. Okay. Now V is the second period when the child become an adult, right? So that is a function of H, which is a human capital. So in this very simple model, uh, we can show this result d delta dx star. So the higher the probability of punishment, uh, the higher study effort the child will put in. So in this simple model, we can de demonstrate punishment is assumed to be effective. Okay, so the higher probability of punishment, the more effort the child would exert uh, on his human capital investment. Now we look at the parent. The parent is very much the same as a child in terms of the second part of utility. Okay, except the first part is UM, is uh, his own consumption or her own consumption. The second part is very much the same as a child, except now in front of U, there is no A. Okay, so in this, there is A here. In front of U, there is A here. And that is the difference between the parent and the child. We assume A is greater than one. So child is more myopic. Our child plays higher weight on the current utility than the parents, okay? Otherwise, parent is uh, altruistic other than this difference. So uh, parents has almost the same utility function as the child except this A minus B delta. So for simplicity, we just assume a negative utility in the form of B times delta. delta. So if the child, if the parent punish the child, it generates negative utility to the parent. Okay. So in this uh, part, we can demonstrate dr d delta is greater than zero. So that means dr r is the ability or capability of the child. The higher the capability of the child, the higher the probability of punishment. Okay. So again, the intuition is this. Uh, the parents were considered the productivity, the child's productivity of the effort, okay? If the effort is very productive, that means punishing the child is has higher return, right? Thus, the incentive of the parent to choose a higher probability of punishment would increase, okay? So on the other hand, if the child's ability is low, that means punishing the child does not, not yield a higher a high return in the future, then the parents would tend not to punish. In our empirical work, we measure the child's ability or capability by DDLD, developmental delay or learning disability. So a child suffering from DDLD, which means a lower R, right? Lower R reduce parents' return in disciplining the child to exert more effort. Therefore, the child, the parent would choose a lower probability of punishment. So if the child has DDLD, the model would predict uh, if the child does not perform well, uh, the parents uh, would choose uh, not to punish or less likely to punish. That's the main prediction of the... Now, the prediction of Dobuki and zero body uh, that can be uh, well rationalized in our model. They predict that when parents' uh, education goes up, the probability of punishment goes down. So in our model, uh, we can think we, we don't have to use their very complicated model. If we simply uh, think this A is a function of parents' education, right? So highly educated parents are more effective in modeling the preference of the child. In other words, if this A is a function of education and the highly educated parents 
can more effective to move the value of a towards one then uh, they would be successful in uh, lower the parent uh, the child's weight on the current utility and then the child would place more utility weight in the future and thus the parents uh, the child will study harder so we can uh, easily get that result now data uh, when we look at the data uh, a couple of years ago we found this data uh, which was also used by Weinberger uh, in, in his JPE study. So we use uh, data from 207 uh, child development supplement of the PD, PSID. Okay. And we mainly look at the primary caretaker. Uh, and unless otherwise uh, specified, we normally look at the biological children. Okay. And we exclude the observation where the age gap between parent and child is smaller than 14 or larger than 46 to avoid the outliers. Okay, so in the survey, uh, in this uh, child development su uh, supplement survey of the PSID, in the interview, the primary caretaker uh, was asked the following question. If the child brought home a study card with grades or progress lower than expected, would you punish the child? Would you say that would be not at all likely, somewhat unlikely, not sure how likely, somewhat likely, and more uh, very likely? So we define a dummy variable, unlikely punish. So not punish, okay, or unlikely punish equal to one, if not at all likely, or somewhat unlikely, and zero, if not sure how likely or somewhat uh, likely or uh, very likely. We, we also play around with uh, some sensitivity analysis and the result uh, seems to be quite uh, robust in general. Okay, now the survey also has information on DDLD. So the survey asks uh, each uh, primary caretaker, has child's doctor or health professional ever said the child had developmental problems such as developmental delay or learning disability? So we define a dummy variable uh, DDLD equal to one if the child has DDLD and zero otherwise. In our data, about 8% of children uh, were uh, diagnosed by doctor or health professional as having DDLD. And that is consistent with other data sets we, we benchmark. If we look at the data uh, briefly, we see the mean uh, is unlikely punish is 0.7, uh, 0 0.3, which means 0 0.7 is likely punish. So even in the US uh, in 206 or 207, uh, the punishment option is not uncommon. Uh, people might think in the US uh, you know, parenting is very easygoing, very uh, permissive, uh, very, very passive. Uh, actually, the data shows that uh, that's not the case. Okay, 70% of the parents would choose some kind of punishment uh, if if the child performance was not good. So we use this very simple. Uh, reduced form uh, regression to look at DDLD effect of DDLD on uh, likelihood of punishment, okay? And as our model <coughs> predicts, uh, child with DDLD parents uh, would have low return 
in punishing the child. Therefore, the parents will be less likely to punish. And the left hand side is not like is unlikely punish. Therefore, the prediction of the model is beta one should be positive, right? DDLD, right, increase the probability of not punish. Therefore, these two should be positively correlated. So beta one should be should be positive. So that's the prediction. And education, uh, the higher the education, right, then less likely to punish. So beta two should also be positive. Right. And other control variable includes parents' age, family income, race, and uh, sex of the children. Okay. Now, uh, before we report the OLS results, actually there is one co concern that uh, my, many of you may have already uh, thought of, right? Now, the DDLD, right, as I said earlier, could it be genetic or could it be other pregnancy or birth complication? So if we think on the right-hand side of this equation, uh, there may be an omitted variable, right? Let's say the omitted variable is genetic factor. And ge the omitted genetic factor would be correlated with DDLD, very likely, right? Because the DDLD is likely to be genetically related. Now, genetic variable is also likely to affect the tendency of punishment, right? You know, people with good genes, I don't know, maybe are uh, more controlled and uh, people with uh, not good genes or genetic factors, uh, endowment, not, not, not as good genetic endowment, maybe, you know, uh, not, not very good at control and maybe uh, choosing more uh, punishment uh, style, education style. So in other words, uh, it is quite likely that the DDLD is an endogenous variable, right? With uh, omitted genetic factor, right? So uh, let's keep this in mind. So this is what uh, we, 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 I, I have just said, potential endogeneity of DDLD. And uh, actually, uh, DDLD is potentially subject to omitted genetic factor and unobserved heterogeneity in the family and parental characteristics or preferences, right? Anything uh, unobserved in the family uh, could cause uh, the endogeneity of uh, DDLD, okay? So we look at the data hoping to find a, a, a varied instrument variable to deal with the problem. Of course, that's not easy, right? So what we uh, end up using is uh, uh, using a fixed effects model. Now, so what we do is we compare siblings, right? So if we use sibling fixed effects model, right, we take difference between the siblings, one has DDLD, one doesn't have DDLD, and the fixed effect would control for any genetic factor, assuming the genetic factor is family level, and unobserved the heterogeneity at the family level will also be wiped out by sibling fixed effects. So we use this uh, biological sibling effects estimator to reduce the potential uh, omitted variable bias. So here are the results. Uh, so the S coefficient is all positive. Okay, there's three specification here. Okay, when we omit those control variable, this is not significant downward bias. And uh, we can use simple econometrics to figure out why this variable DDLD would be under uh, bias downwards when the, those relevant control variables are omitted using a simple omitted variable formula. Now, looking at uh, specification two and three, we see that the uh, child with DDLD, uh, parents' likelihood of punishment would be uh, reduced by 
10 percentage points. Okay, so that's not a, a small effect. Okay. Uh, when we define the punishment using an index, uh, we also get the same result. Instead of defining a dummy, we use an index, okay, just by the uh, original answer that uh, not likely uh, labeled as five and very likely labeled as one. Okay, so using an index would give us same result, qualitatively same result. Now we look at the uh, sibling fix effects. So here we see, uh, compare the OLS, which is 10, 11 percentage points uh, effect. Uh, when we look at the sibling fix effect, the effect is uh, uh, 15.5 percentage points. So in another words, OLS is biased, biased downward. Okay, and the fixed effect is uh, is higher, and also uh, very both are very significant. Okay, and again, one can use a simple uh, econometrics omitted variable uh, formula to figure out why OLS is is biased downward. Okay, so that's the main result. Now we do some alternative uh, or robust, robustness analysis, and we also try to exclude a competing hypothesis. Now, if we have a measure of a more serious problem than DDLD, then maybe the effect should be even stronger, right? And we say the child with DDLD, parents would be less likely to punish. If the child has a problem more serious than DDLD, uh, then the, the coefficient should be bigger. Okay, so in the survey, there was a question, has child doctor or professional, uh, pro health professional ever said the child had mental retardation? So mental retardation is uh, a far more uh, serious issue than uh, DDLD. So American Association on Intellectual and Developmental Disability defines mental retardation, MR, as a disability characterized by significant limitations, both in intellectual functioning and in adaptive behavior, as expected in conceptual, social, and practical adaptive skills that originates before 18 years old. So uh, MR is more serious than DDLD. So we should expect MR's coefficient should be larger than DDLD if we put this MR variable in the regression. And indeed, when we put MR variable in the regression, the coefficient is 0.5. So the likelihood of punishment will go down by 50 percentage points. Okay, and DDLD actually become insignificant. And sibling fixed effects also uh, is higher, 55 percentage points MR. Okay, so that confirms our uh, prior expectation that a more serious uh, child disability would further reduce the likelihood of uh, punishment. Okay, so. Is there any other explanation, right? Uh, as many of you may have thought of, uh, parents of DDLD children, could they be more kind to their children, right? So you may think, or we may think that uh, parents of children with DDLD may be very kind, right? And if the kind effect is there, then um, parents choose not to punish the children when their performance is not good. It's not because of human capital consideration. It's simply because they are more kind to such children, more sympathetic, more care, more loving, more forgiving. Right? Then if that's the case, then our hypothesis that uh, parents not punishing children uh, with bad performance 
is not because of human capital. It's not because of lower return on punishing them. It's simply because they are more kind to such children. So how do we test that? How do we exclude such a possibility? So the way we think of is we think uh, if kind effect is there, and if kind effect is really the dominating reason to explain our result, then biological parent should have a stronger kind effect, right? So biological parents compared with uh, parents who adopted the children, biological parents should be more kind, right? Should, should show, show more love to their children. So we introduce the interaction of DDLD with biological parent. And we expect the coefficient should be positive, right? Biological parents should exhibit a stronger kind of effect than adopted parents, right? Now, contrary to this hypothesis, we find the, intro the introduction, uh, the interaction between uh, biological parent and uh, DDLD is negative significant. So in another words, biological parents are more likely to punish their own children when their performance is not good. So that we uh, interpret as lack of evidence for the existence of kind effect. Okay. And sibling effects also show the same thing. The, the interaction be between DDLD and BP is negative. Okay and significant. So biological parents are more likely to punish their, their own children. Now, so we were a little bit puzzled. How come biological parents show no strong kind of effect? So we look at the psychology literature and we find there are two effects going on, the kind of effect and the stress effect. And uh, the uh, part of the literature shows that parents of children with DD may become more frustrated because their children are more challenging, okay? And some psych psychology studies find that parents of children with DD experience more parenting stress. So that can explain why our results, uh, we cannot find the, the, the strong kind of effect because there is concurrently a stress effect going on. So biological parents, uh, face not only the kind of effect, but also the stress effect. So that, uh, so anyway, so that ex we show there is no, uh, no strong kind of effect. And the reason for the no uh, kind, strong kind of effect is because there is also stress effect going on. Uh, we also do some other things, but uh, the time is uh, almost up one last minute. So and I omit this part. So let me draw the conclusion. In this study, we show a simple economic analysis on a common instrument of tiger parents in parenting, which is to punish their children in the context of human capital investment. And we look at uh, into the black box of uh, thing. Okay. So our study provides a more general explanation of punishment or the or the motivation or motive for punishment in a human capital investment framework that can consider the parent's utility cost in punishing the child in generating the prediction that the parents would choose a lower probability to punish a child suffering from DDLD because of lower return to punish the child in, in terms of increasing their human capital. And we also find education uh, aspect. We provide supporting evidence of Dupuki and Zerapoti uh, paper. More educated parents uh, choose less likely to, to punish. So the main innovation uh, is this idea. So our study identifies another important factor yet neglected so far behind tiger parenting. That is child children's capability. 
Okay. Okay. I think I can stop here uh, for a few minutes of questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Zhang, for a very interesting talk. Um, so, um, is there any questions from the floor? Can type in the um, chat box or um, while we are waiting for the, um, oh, okay. So, um, Han Yu Zhu asked how to address the systematic difference between the family with DDLD children and other normal kids, such as whether they could detect a DDLD kid before the child was born. Can I see the message? Uh, it showed up briefly and then disappeared. Um, you can click the the balloon balloon shape. How do you um? Uh, can can you read it again? Yeah, yeah. So I think the question is about how do you address the difference between the family with DDLD kid and other family with the normal kids. So. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so the sibling fixed effects model can can uh, deal with that, right? That, that's the uh, endogeneity issue, right? It's related to the endogeneity issue, right? The systematic difference between these two types of family. So we recognize there is there is something going on in the selection in generating this GDLD. So the idea is rather than comparing uh, different types of family, we now compare within family difference, right? So that's the idea. Okay. And then another question from Yao Ling Wang is um, um, on the kindness effect, it's interesting to find the biological parents are more likely to punish. And the question is, do the non-biological parents know if the child they're going to adopt is DDLD? And if so, that might be a selective group. Right. Uh, I think adopting children normally, they adopt the child at a very early stage. I don't think they, they know uh, if the child has DDLD. But I, I'm not sure. But yeah. most likely they, they adopt the child very young. Mm. Right. So if it's very young, uh, it doesn't show. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Actually, to follow up on that, I, um, I'm curious when is the sort of the primary age that this DDLD starts to show? Um, so is it really detected at early age or um, is it usually detected in like primary schooling age? Um, I think that's kind mm -hmm. of related to um, that question as well. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, I, I think that is the, something I need to look into. The, the age distribution of DDLD and uh, whether there is an issue with uh, lack of DDLD with uh, with adopted parents, uh, whether that issue can explain the the biological parents mm. seemingly uh, you know look more likely to punish their children. So wh mm. whether that kind of concern can cause that result, I I need to look into it. Yeah, thank mm. you. And then one more question from um, Ru Xianguan is that, is it possible that the effect of punishment might be non-monotonic? Sometimes it's too hard punishment might disencourage efforts in human capital accumulation. If it's true, um, does it affect the interpretation of your results? Okay. Uh... That uh, I'm not sure. We need to explore the number of opposition is not 
very high. So if we do multiple category, right now we simply use a dummy or use the index, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if we use a, a multinomial logit or probit, uh, I'm not sure if the estimation where, but it's something we can think uh, whether there is a non-linearity non on the left-hand side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I guess one last question. Um, so uh, from Yuan Wang, does the data provide any other measure of ability such as cognitive test score or ranking in class? Uh, not that I'm aware of, yeah. But my course did the empirical work. So as far as I know, uh, it doesn't. Mm. I think um, okay. So one more uh, one more last question. I don't know uh, from um, from David on Onog. Um, I don't know if he addressed this point, but could the punishment be coordinated with rewards if the share of rewards and punishment varies with parent background? Might that affect your results? Coordinated with sorry. I, I... So is is the punishment coming? together with the rewards. So is, is uh, the punishment is related to rewards as well? I think that's the question. I see, I see, I see. I, I don't think the data set provides uh, any uh, linkage, you know, or any rules uh, with uh, punishment and the rewards. It only asks if you punish, if the child is, uh, the school report is no good, but it doesn't say, you know, if you punish and if we, the child reach uh, expectation or improves, what would you reward? It, the data doesn't have such thing. But I think um, to follow up on that, if you have um, other um, questionnaire, like um, the tendency to give rewards um, to children, you know, saying good words, encouraging words, I mean, maybe, you know, the tiger parents are also the ones who tend to really be encouraging as well. I'm not sure whether that's the case or not, but then I think, um, yeah, if that tendency is correlated, maybe the this likelihood of punishing um, can partly capture, perhaps, just the thought. <laughs> mm, so you, you think punishment is... Uh positively correlated with the degree of encouragement? I mean, if that is the case, I think it, yeah. it could affect the result, yeah. But, but that, 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 yeah, that I I conjecture is unlikely. Yeah, <laughs> if, <laughs> yeah if they, you know, if the parents are, are such, uh, you know, uh, good at uh, encouraging the child, then uh, they probably wouldn't choose the, unless it's it's such a such a skilled combination of uh, you know <laughs> on the one hand you yeah. right <laughs> carrots and the stick on both hands right so but there is such a possibility but I think it's unlikely yeah yeah but I think, yeah it's one one way is dominating i think one way is dominating where well, that that's my my own feeling yeah okay um so i think our time is um up almost so um let me uh, let us thank uh, professor zhang for a very interesting um stimulating talk and um yeah so i hope you um help all of you to see you in some other um sessions <laughs> and at some yeah. other time. Okay. Thanks yeah. a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye.